Good morning, everybody. And thank you, Dr. Johnson, for giving me this opportunity to present today. Today, I'm gonna to focus on troubleshooting some ornamentals. Next slide. Um, what I wanna to talk to you guys about today are some of the insects and their damage that I'm seeing in the landscape, some of the diseases, and also um, how to change the color of your, your big leaf hydrangeas. Um, not only am I getting calls, text messages, emails, occasionally people will stop by my house um, to ask me some questions, but I'm actually seeing these things in my own backyard. So some of the pictures you may see, they may come, you may see they, they came from my backyard. Next slide. Let's first talk about the azalea lace bug. Um, you'll see this damage, they feed on the underside of the leaves, but the damage that they're causing is gonna be apparent on the upper leaf surface. There's the stippled appearance of the leaf surface. The plant may look a little chlorotic, chlorotic because of the um, adjoining cells coming together. And normally these bugs are about an eight to a fourth of an inch long. Next slide. Spider mites. Right now it's hot, some, some parts of the state it's dry, and spider mites really are out in abundance when it's hot, dry weather. The adults are probably about just as large as the um, period on your page. What they do, they feed on the underneath side of the leaf. They suck the juices from the leaf, which cause this white to yellow stipples to appear. Now, another indication that you may have spider mites or you may have a heavy infestation of spider mite, if there's a webbing appearance on the underneath of the leaf, or if you see web in between the leaves and the stem. So this is where they kind of get, they get their name from spider mites because of their, their webbing. Now in abundance, you may get the stipples to coalesce and the leaves may turn white, yellowish, or even grayish brown, and then they may die. Next slide. Aphids. Aphids um, is a soft bodied insect um, that also feeds on the underneath of the leaf. The most common colors are pale green, um, I'm sorry, pale yellow green. They can also come in black or even white, such as the woolly aphids. Um, they have a sucking piercing mouth part. So what they would do is they will pierce into the plant and sap is withdrawn. And they will usually draw out more sap than they can take in. So there's two little tailpipes on the end of that abdomen that they will then um, push out the sap, and basically the sap is called honeydew. And honeydew is a sugary substance, a sugary protein substance, that when it falls to the leaf surface, it may serve as a medium for the development of fungus city mold. I get many calls from people who will say, I have this black soot on my um, crepe myrtles, or I, or they're on my, especially on gardenias. And the, one, the first thing I would tell them is, you know, yes, you have the city mole and it's caused because of the honeydew, but we need to treat for the aphids that are on the underside of the leaf. Um, normally you can kind of wash the city mole off. You can take a high pressure water hose and clean it, but most often you want to address the aphid problem first. Next slide. Powdery mildew. Um, powdery mildew is a very common disease here in, in Georgia. Um, it peaks around May and June, but you may find it in your landscape between May and October. It likes, um, it's, some of its hosts include dogwoods, crepe myrtles, and some herbaceous plants like phlox, gerber daisies, um, ber verbena. verbena. It's this, you, you can really identify it because it's this white grayish powdery patch. Sometimes the patches will turn, will turn brown. Um, normally you'll see this on the shoots and leaves and the flowers. Also, um, you'll also see some distortedness or some stunning in your leaves. You may see some twisting and curling of the leaves. Now, um, once you see it at this stage, these spores could be blown other places. So when you're spraying, you want to spray your new tender leaves and shoots. Um, at this particular point, spraying powdery milk, spraying powdery milk, spraying this, it's not going to um, stop that problem. Also, if you're, excuse me, one, let's go back to the, 
that powdery mildew. Also, if you have your dogwoods like I do that are in um, shaded areas, you may want to prune some of the um, limbs to have a good air circulation going through because that will prevent powdery mildew from happening. Next slide. Azalea leaf gall. This is another one of those um, fungus that I found in my yard back in March when I was putting out some pine straw um, in my azalea bed. I noticed that there were some leaves that I thought had maybe bird poop on them, so I wasn't trying to touch them. Then I looked a little close. I looked a little closer, and I saw that the tissue was swelling and becoming fleshy and bladder-like. So I thought, oh, okay. So that was actually. Um, azalea leaf gall. And then they were going to eventually turn white. So the white growth that you see on there, the spores are coming, the spores are produced within that white growth. And so once those spores are produced, they can be blown by water splashing up on the plant or even wind blown. So you would really, at this particular point, want to go ahead and pick them off, prune them out, discard them, do not put them in your compost bin, put them in the trash can or even, even burn them because um, azalea leaf gall or flower gall can overwinter and affect your plants the next spring. Next slide. And finally, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the color changing in, in hydrangeas. I get this um, at least two or three times a year. I just recently got asked this question over Facebook about two weeks ago. Um, one of my friends have some big leaf hydrangeas in her front yard and she noticed that they're pink this year versus last year when they were blue. Basically, the color variation is due to the presence of aluminum either in the plant or not in the plant. Um, if it is present in the plant, then you will have blue hydrangeas or blue flowers. If it's not or if you have very little um, aluminum in the plant, then they will become pink. You're, if you're looking for that blue color, you want a more acidic soil where the pH level is around 5.5 or below, and that's where you're going to get the greatest um, abundance of aluminum. So if you want to change the color of your hydrangeas, you can do it gradually over a year or so, or you can do it instantly. Um, so if you're looking for a more bluish flower and they're pink, you want to broadcast about a half a cup of wettable sulfur and water that in. And if they're already pink and you want to turn them blue, then you want to use about a, uh, I'm sorry, if they're, um, if you want to get them pink, then you want to use about a cup of dolomitic lime. Basically, your that dolomitic lime is going to help raise that pH level to become more alkaline to get that pinkish color. Now, this may take about a year or so to do, um, but if you want that done instantly or earlier than that, then you can just take a tablespoon of aluminum sulfate, mix that with water, about a gallon of water, and soil drench that around your plant in March, April, and May. And if you want them pink, then you want to use a hydrated lime and apply that at the same time, March, April, or May. And you could start to see your color change. Now, this is, this is not, this is not work for all um, hydrangeas just your mop head and lace cap varieties. Some of those other ones that are white, they're, they're just going to, they're going to stay white no matter what the soil pH is. And um, next slide. Finally, here's the resource page. Um, most of this information could be found on our extension publications page. You just um, put in the subject box or the search box, whatever you're looking for. If you're wanting to get more information on azaleas or hydrangeas, and um, any of the images, go to bugwood.org. Some of the images came from me. I also do a blog um, every couple of weeks on horticultural topics. As with most of your county extension agents, if you um, go to their website, they may do a blog for horticultural or agricultural topics as well. I want to thank you guys again. If you have any questions, I'll answer them at the end. But for now, I'm going to turn it over to Laura.